Hello and welcome to Portman Road. This sound indicates an important announcement. Hello Talking Towners, it is 2021 and if you're like me and a business owner, 2020 was pretty dire. Now 2021 is the time to kickstart your campaign in terms of sales. So why not join lots of other men and women from across the country on our online UK wide networking uh, events, both for Networking 90 and Speed 60. So check out IWantToNetwork.com and Networking90.co.uk. Hello again, my friends, and you are my friends. And normally we'd save that introduction spot for Paul Lambert, but today I thought I'd get somebody who speaks more sense and has got more to say. And we had Lizzie there from Networking90. So it is the morning or the afternoon after now, I suppose, although I've been up probably about an hour. So it is still the morning for me. The morning after the day before, town 2021 hungover still from new years potentially a 3-2 home defeat to swindon swindon town who hadn't won a game in six uh, but as ben the milk train man said yesterday on the on the post game show we are the cure for all ills uh, joining me this week will be none other than the hard truth boys themselves matt phillips and richard moss before we get into that we do also want to hear from you guys either in the chat section of our show such as this. Good afternoon, Callie. Good afternoon, Lee. Good afternoon, Stuart, who was on the show yesterday. Unhappy Stu. Um, he had a very, very good point as he left. He waited till he was leaving to make this really good point. So, Stuart, if you do want to discuss it more about how the club maybe gets back to its more family roots, its more traditional roots, then come on the show. I know Matt Phillips has a few ideas about that himself. Then uh, you're more than welcome. Just ask for the link in the chat and I'll make sure you get it. Now, let's not be around the book. Let's get straight into today's show because I've got a feeling it's going to be a really, really exciting one. So joining me first of all is our media mogul, Matt Phillips. We'll kick things off with you, Matt, because the cruncher, despite saying he'll keep his powder dry, couldn't keep his powder dry last night. He couldn't wait to go slide footing in to the post-game show. So we'll start with yourself. Swindon, defeat, three goals conceded at home. How are you feeling, 24? Grumpy. Hours on. Massively grumpy. I didn't... I, 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 I mean, we were at the top of the show, almost speechless. What do we have to do to get rid of Lambert? How far do we have to fall? We've been saying this since the show started. Back in, what, May, early May, June, we said, you know, COVID had been kind to him. And Ben Adams said it yesterday on the show that COVID's helped his career at Portman Road, prolonged it. But, I mean, I I said, didn't I, at the start of the season, he'd be gone by Christmas. So I got that wrong. But there's a lot of results there that say he should have been gone by Christmas. The fact that we lost to to Hull, Charlton, Portsmouth all back-to-back. With really dire performances, all at home without scoring, by the way, against promotion rivals. And we scraped past Burton, which we said on first day show. We only just did that. Would we? And yes. we felt we'd probably just scrape past Swindon. Well, again, you know, it's come back to bite us on the bum. Scraping past is not what you can do in this division. You've got to be on it from minute one through to 90. And Ipswich were not on it at all yesterday until probably Norwood came on and, and 
gave a little bit of swag, a little bit of streetwise, you know, a bit of streetwise play to the team. But we've now lost to a team that was second from bottom. And guess what? We've got Burton next week, who beat Gillingham yesterday under Jimmy yes. Bank. So Turn now they're on. Now he's turning it around. People, clubs are turning it around and we're going down, down the table. So I didn't celebrate the goals yesterday. You two had the ump with me. But I am, you know, if you play for an hour, terrible play for an hour, and suddenly you get a fluky goal, and it was a fluke because this cross has come in, Norwood's air kicked it, it's come off Cadiz, and he's stuck the rebound in. I'm not cheering it. I'm not cheering that kind of goal in League One. Forget it. It's not good enough. Doesn't deserve our support. The standards are not there anymore. I keep saying well, to you. Andy Gray is going to go in early. He says the we have to st- to be out. Andy Gray has gone in early, Matt. He says we have to stop buying merchandise and virtual tickets until yeah, seriously uh, something changes. Well, merchandise is a, is is, a, is a, an interesting one, and obviously we've got Mister Merchandise himself. <laughs> Stop buying merchandise, Crunch. Why don't you two cancel your season tickets then? Because <laughs> we keep because <laughs> we keep saying it. Whilst you're investing in the club, what you say and when you do these kind of shows, it gives you that credibility. Yeah, I agree with that. Another voice. Yeah, I agree with that, Matt. Because we we can't really do a podcast if we're not watching the games, can we? Yeah. No, also, exactly. FOMO. Is it fear of missing out? You know, like uh, my seat is my seat, and I it's, it's like it's like playing the lottery. Like the wife always says to me, "Why you play the lottery for?" Well, if the moment I don't play the lottery, my numbers will come out. The moment I give my seat up, somebody else will <laughs> steal my seat of twenty plus years, and you I'll think? be. <laughs> well, this is it. But this is it, right? You know, if you stop playing the lottery, the numbers probably won't come out. But it's that FOMO, isn't it? It's that fear of missing out. It's the that most... fear of it going. And most important thing I want to know, Martin, is how was your fish and chips last night, mate? Oh, f- I can't swear. It's only up plus one. Dross, mate. Worse than the game of football. Oh, really? Worse. Yeah, and the two beers I had with it didn't do nothing to console me. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I w- Coddle Haddock. I just Was had chips. I felt sick. Oh. I just had chips. Yeah. That that mm. performance yesterday left me feeling <laughs> numb and sick. I'll and tell you what it is, right? I was thinking, like, so I wasn't celebrating the goals, right? Now, that you know, if my dad was still here, he'd think I've gone crazy. Well, we did as well. Celebrating goals, right? But... The fact we're watching it on TV, we've now got this disconnect with the club a little bit. We can't go to Portman Road, so there's even more disconnect there. I do think if we had been watching that game in the stadium yesterday and we won down and that ball would come in and Norwood's there, I think we'd all have been off our seats and, you know, the Bobby Robson stand forcing that ball into the back of the net. I probably would have been up. But the fact we're actually, I'm sat on my sofa talking to you two on WhatsApp moaning and getting grumpy, it just gives you that, it just gives you more layers to the disconnect, doesn't it? Because you're not there, you're not there. Well, this is it. But the, the disconnect is true. And obviously, we, we, we can't physically sort of... Well, we can't, we can't ever physically force Lambert out of the football club anyway. But yesterday, I'd have felt better losing 3-2 with Corey and Darber and Luke Wolfenden in the centre of, in the centre of defence. With, I mean, Dobra was playing. You know, I want to see these green shoots that... And, and I know Marcus Evans says you've got to be there to see them. Why? Is my camera lying? Is, is my TV screen telling me something that's not true? Did yeah. we win yesterday then? Like... No, we are can all green, see yeah, it's Where crap. are the green? Well, you'd expect green shoots to come from the youth, wouldn't you? That's talking to, talking to green shoots. Talking to green <laughs> shoots. Cat, Callie messaged me this morning. He said he's going to go and smoke some green shoots. <laughs> we do not condone such actions on this show. Yeah, yeah, one yeah, yeah, on a Sunday afternoon. It's a family show, Cruncher. Um, <laughs> but we, said, we, we, said back, we said back in the summer, like, we were talking about Fling Downs, weren't we? And the fact that we wanted decent money for Fling Downs. And if Palace came in for him, they offered, what, a little, around about a million. I don't think it ever went past 1.2, 1.4. And I said at the time, and got a lot of flack on Twitter, and said, perhaps he's overhyped. Perhaps he ain't that good. Because it's difficult. His stats are difficult to, to, to sort of um, to assess, aren't they? Because he's box to box. He's not really a goal scorer. He picks up a lot of cards. Um, tackling stats is difficult. Um, poor man is Geron Indoor. Yeah. So it's, it's difficult to assess. But... You had Dazelle yesterday. He's what twenty-one. The kid who scored that goal for Swindon, Twine. He's twenty-one. He's only two. He's only two years, uh, two months younger. That Jai Simi looks a good, 
guy, didn't they? They got him from Norwich. He was 21. The left back, 20. And he was Dom good. Goodman, Dom Goodman he was, was good him up. How much better does he look than Miles Kenlock, who's 24? They got you good. You, that Scott Twan will go for a lot of money. He'll go for a lot more than our young youngsters will go for. Yeah, but that's one. Go, that is one game, Matt. That we're looking. We're looking at one game from Swindon. Then players. Now I've got a stat here. They have got um, one point from six games before they played us. So they've not exactly been pulling up any trees, have they? We that's, your rule. They did play well. Look, look, Twine. It was a great goal. Um, there was one uh, pre-season. Uh, my, my boss sent me this morning. He was on. Uh, he's a Coventry fan, and he scored an exact same goal in a friendly against Coventry. So, yeah. look, that look. I, I said last night, I like to watch good football, and for all the things we could say about that goal that we should have closed him down, Martin's going to fall off his chair because I'm going to say Dizel was lazy then because he, he could have But look, I like to watch good football, Matt, and that was a great goal. One of the best goals I've seen at Portman Road since Leighton Baines. Me, uh, as Andre, as Andre, as, as, sorry, has Dozel scored at Portman Road? Scored against Leeds. Yes. Leeds. So it, it's, he's now equal Dozel's record, right? The great, the great got, Andre. He scored in the FA Cup. He scored in the FA Cup against Cox. Yeah, he scored against Lincoln, didn't he? Oh, Lincoln, that was okay, it. Okay, yeah. so he's one got all. one more to go. He's got I'm one more to me, go. My dad was well known in the co-op stand for applauding really good away goals. <laughs> I thought of him yesterday. He applauded that Leighton Baines one and he loved that one. Um, it was a great strike. I, our youngsters don't do that. I mean, what balls to take a shot from that distance of 21 at Portman Road? Yeah, it's called ability. Oh, stop with this. Armando Dobra is about as ready as a raw turkey. Yeah, you've like, got to be able to do it in a pressure situation. ready. And you fans, us fans, I'm a fan, have been calling for Dobra for months. And Lambert's kind of been saying, yeah. you know, no, 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 yeah. no, no. What, mm. what has he said? What has he shown rather, in the last three games? I'd rather games? see an Amando Dobra playing than a Freddie Sears every day of the week. Oh, well, that's not hard, is it? Because I feel like that's got... Let's go back to Twine again. He, he young kid, and he's gone to Newport, and he scored goals at Newport. I think he got seven five goals. goals seven goals. Seven, seven goals. And, um, he got, and he's obviously got that one to strike yesterday. So he didn't think twice about going out and playing in League Two and building up his experience and coming out of a comfort zone. Because um, I'm sure they've got decent, you know, it's a decent ground in it, the um, county ground at Swindon, and they've probably got decent facilities. Our lads haven't done that. Dobber hasn't done that. He hasn't gone out of his comfort zone. Andre Dizel didn't go out of his comfort zone. And this is where we're, I think this is where we're losing the street wiseness. They're too inside the, the cotton wool bubble. They're too cotton wool of this. Yeah, but equally, I do think as fans, we have to take a step back from time to time and, and realise when we've over over expected like we, we we think this squad is really good well yesterday yesterday squads that are really good don't it was 3-2 but it really was a 3-1 game the second oh, goal if any other sport would have been blocked his yeah. own shot <laughs> but any other any other sport you'd say oh that was stat padding that was garbage yeah. time i think yes when we scored that equalizer right mm. i think most of us would have not just us three on here a lot of us fans would have said there's only one team going to go on and win that game. That Good teams do. At that stage of the game. And that, sort of, that second goal knocked the wind out of our sails, didn't it? Totally yeah. deflated them. Yeah. You know, I'll get a flack for this, but even part of me was thinking, you know, when it was... When, I've, when we got made it back to 3-2, I was thinking, don't get the point. Because that steps the club back again. We won. We've got, we got an ex-player in the chat there, Martin. Can you put it's Kevin Ellis's message up? Because he played for town. Back in the 90s. So, look, you can't say on one hand playing Dabba and then say Dobra's not ready. That is spot on. We can't no, have it both ways. Well, we can. Because I, I can. We, no, because no, what, 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 what are we doing? Are we playing for next year? If we are, get Corey and Dabba in the team with, with Dobra. Or is this year really important? And if so, get Dobra out of the team. Because at the moment, you're kind of putting one foot in the, in, in the pool and one foot out and going, oh, I'm not quite sure. Like, Are we going full, full steam ahead for this year? Or are we kind of looking further afield because Dobra's Ask not ready. Ask the manager. Ask Leo oh, Neal. I'm not allowed. They won't let me near him. They won't let me bloody yeah, yeah. near him. You're spot, on. you're spot on there because we can, we're going to get to it. I know callie has got a bee in his bonnet about the local press. You know, they need to start asking some proper questions. You know, this week, don't go fannying around. When you do your interview on, I think it's Friday, you know, you've got to ask some hard-hitting questions that not just us three want, you look at social media this morning. Everybody wants them questions asked. Have they got the balls to ask them questions? And it's not just down to Stu. It's not just down to Andy Warren. 
Mark Heath, it's the, the people above them. Are they going to say to them, you can go and ask X, X, Y, and Z, print this in the paper? Forget these questions. Where's the hard-hitting headlines? Where, well, where's not... the not good enough? Where's the disgusting? Where's the, where's the out... Like, you know, Statman suggested, didn't he? Has the Ipswich star called for Lambert's head yet? I hadn't seen it. I haven't seen it. I mean... Who was the last the... manager they called for? Would you want do you remember the days when they had um, when John sure. Lyle kicked the reporter off the team coach for a, for an yeah. article he didn't like? Um, well, who was that? I can't, think, can't think of the name of something. Had, um, was he it Dave Allard the, or something? Yes, Allard. I think it was. He yeah. kicked him off the coach. He said, "You're not welcome around here anymore because of, the, of, of what you've written." Allard mm. didn't look at his privileges and go, "Do I write that article?" Allard just and wrote let, the article. And let me, having been around press accreditation for a few years. We, you know, we've applied to, to go do it, and Ipswich won't let us in. There's no, there's no special thing you need. Well, you, don't need a special bit of, you don't need it. You don't need a special bit of paper. It's up to the club. They could let us in if they wanted to, but they don't want to. And I, I've said it before. I don't see any difference to what EADT are doing to what Talking Town are doing because they seem to be prioritising a podcast over the newspaper. And, and I'm his biggest news, fan. And local news. <laughs> I mean, no local news is uh, dying on its ass. Right, let's bring in a couple of people. We've got some people Who waiting buys here. For now, Matt? Who buys the East Anglian? I don't it's know. Got website, don't you? The pod drives yeah. people to the website is what the idea is. Yeah. I think you have to, just, you know, I, I, I love the guys there. I mean, Stuart Watson's a really good guy. So is Andy Warren. The few times I've and spoken Townfair, to them. And Townfair, though, are they? Because Stu's I... gone on record stays Everton. And Andy um, covered Swindon for a good few years. And Mark Keith, I don't think, has been in the ground since Blackburn on the opening day, a couple of seasons back, because that was a I just joke. want headlines. I just want headlines. I just want people to start calling people to account. Uh, Leando, welcome in. First time I think you've been on the show ever. So please, you can join us. Hi, guys. Will you make it this absolute circus? Oh, dear me. So, I mean, where do you start? I mean, yesterday's game. Um, first of all, just going back to what you guys were saying about the players, I don't think we've got a good enough squad. I think we've said for a long time, or, you know, when we came down, it was like, you know, we've got these players here, we should be good enough for League One. But I think, I think the, re, uh, the reality is we're not, are we? Who have we sold on since Kieran Dyer for any money? Other clubs survive because they bring on their younger players. Mings, Wickham, Cresswell. Well, Mings, so. we didn't buy. We didn't buy Mings. We didn't bring Mings through, did we? We uh, we bought Mings, but we really, did develop not... him. we did develop him, Lee. We we only spent yeah, ten grand on him. It's not enough. Million, when yeah. you, I saw a stat, and I can't remember it now, but it was something like um, for Nottingham Forest. Look at the money that Forest have spent or, or have, have sold, and the money they've they've got in from the players. It's astronomical compared to what Ipswich have done. And then, you know, what did we do with the money? That money came in under McCarthy, did it not? Where are Forrest as a club? Where spent... are Forrest as a club then? They're not that far ahead of us. They're struggling down the bottom of the championship. They might have bought yeah, a lot but... of money in, but they're not exactly well, doing it, are they? Well, I think they're a league ahead of us, aren't they? So I don't yeah. think our young I don't think our academy has been brought on enough. And when you look yeah. at and when you look at um, you know, how McCarthy bought players, the money he, he had, you know, he stayed a year too long, didn't he? In my view. Yep, he great. should have gone. Be- he should have gone before. But the money that we got in then was all yeah. spent on on loans, and it was spent on money to keep people like McGoldrick and that yeah. in the club. We never invested. There was no youngsters coming through, apart from Bishop, who maybe got injured. You know, so the money has never gone on the club. Great, so, so, so that's probably down to Marcus Evans as much as anything. But, but, but we're now suffering for this void that has been left by the McCarthy era. And we can all talk about Hurst. I mean, my goodness. I mean, that's where the club has gone, isn't it? That's that's where we've 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 lost and we've gone down because of what happened to Hurst. And Lambert has come in, tried to pick the pieces up, but who can actually operate under Marcus Evans? Is there anybody? We all talk about changing the manager. Yes, and and by results, Paul Lambert's time is is almost up and off not being, a, say, a supporter of him, but I've understood where he's been coming from and what the club have tried to do. But at the end of the day, you're judged by results. And I, and I don't see whoever we bring in, is gonna, it's not going to change, is it? It's going to be the same amount of investment and you're just going to need a coaching, manager. You know, what about coaching, Lee? Because I think we're a poorly coached and poorly set up team. And that is down to the manager. Yes, absolutely. And... Um, you know, just looking at yesterday's game, you know, I was watching that and I, the first half, 
I mean, as bad as I've ever seen in years, even even to the point where, you know, I nearly turned it off and I'm quite a <laughs> half and I'm quite a half full glass sort of type guy. Yeah, um, you know, but but if you look at yesterday, when they were set up, when the opposition was set up, they were five yards outside their 18-yard box and they were five yards inside the centre circle. So they were in a quarter of a game and we couldn't we couldn't do nothing about that. We had Drinham playing centre forward. We had nobody running in behind. So you can't stretch stretch the game, can you? So, so at that point, we're just playing in front of them and then we get caught on the counter-attack because the balls aren't going in behind, which means you get caught. And that is down to tactics. So what I would like to see, and we talk about two up front, really what you need is you need to be able to change in-game. So you set up. You see, after 15, 20 minutes, we're just banging into a brick wall. So you've got, you know, you've got someone who plays centre forward out on the right wing. You bring him inside and you just swap the formation about a bit and adjust at mid-game. Play 4-4-2 or something. Give them something extra to think about. We just keep, we're too structured in the way we play, aren't we? We're, we're, we're too one-dimensional di- one di- with yeah. what we do. And I think also with the back four, you know, the back four are not a unit of a back four. We've got two Asian fullbacks who are asked to bomb on and do a lot of work. Mm. And, and, they're getting, and we're getting pulled and we're getting pulled and we're caught, caught on the counter. And the reason our players are looking poor at the back is because they're being left one-on-one and the opposition have all that space to play into. So, so really, for me, yeah, it, it is tactics. You know, it, it does need to change. But second half, when Norwood came on, I mean, funny enough, I know the first half, half was so dreadful, but was the second half not a bit more of an entertaining game of football, even though we're still on the end of a defeat? I mean, Norwood, Norwood just makes a big difference to us. And there's people that don't rate him, but he's the best we've got at the moment. He is our only way out of this predicament at the moment, in my view, because he can spin in behind, which means you can open up the, mm. you know, you you, uh, you can open up the the defence and the midfield. Because as a defender, if you haven't got any pace, if you've got no one running in behind, you're just happy just to stand there and just head the ball away. And I think that's the problem uh, that we have, is that we, you know, but as soon as Norwood's there, we run in behind, we get people running off him, and we look a, we, you know, we don't look a great team, but we look a better team. But as you said, Cruncher. At 1-1, one, one, there was only one winner in that game. I mean, if you're a betting man going down the boogies, we were, I thought we looked dominant. And then the, guy, and then the lad just pulls a worldie. And it just it did, did a deflate us. And the third goal as well. I mean, the third goal, you know, I mean, I mean McGuinness needs to get across his player a bit more, perhaps. But it's one of those where it's crossed in. It's a great whipped cross in. And it really beats everybody, doesn't it? And, mm-hmm. and it goes in. And you think, well, have they really done a lot? To, to, to we haven't been torn apart to get that to concede that goal, so you know it was just with everything that else goes on that one game you would probably live with that one game second half if we were better throughout the season because you're going to get times like that where you're just going to get beat by Worldy, you know and, and we blame Dizel, do we? I mean Dizel actually was holding his position in front of the back four. If he runs out to go to that player, which he should have done once he got the ball. If he's out that way, we've been conceded where he's where people are running behind him. So it's just for me, it's just one of those where he's picked the ball up and he's hit it for almost first time and has flown in the top corner. So you can't really defend those uh, to that point because ninety nine times out hundred that ball's going in the, the that ball's going in the top tier of the stand, isn't it? In, in, at League One level, it is. So we take but that. You equally have to sort of you know it's caught. It's, you have to stop. Yeah, at the source, and when he gets the, the the ball at his feet, he has got plenty of time to turn and, and pick a spot and pick a moment. And pick a, 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 Chelsea yeah, bun, Chelsea bun, exactly all of that. Now you make a good point there, Lee, regarding tactics. Are we? I'll ask you three guys, and I've got lockdown. Steve, I'll bring in very shortly. Are we tactically set up through fear? Are is our management crippled by the fear of losing? Are no, we set up way. not to lose? No, we're set because, up to try to win. We're really? set up on the front foot, aren't we? We're trying to play on the front foot. That's why we can see an early goal. I think so, because the full-backs, even though yesterday they weren't quite so far forward, but our full-backs are playing on the, on the sideline. If we lose the ball in midfield, that's where we're getting turned over. I think we're trying to play... I think we're the opposite to where we were with, with a McCarthy. Some of those goals that we've conceded, 
we wouldn't concede those under McCarthy, but we wouldn't get up the other end of the pitch. Our back four doesn't play as a unit. And that brings me back to the point I made earlier. You know, any foundation of a, of a team is built on its back four. You know, you, you, try to, you try to keep your back four narrow when you haven't got, got, got a possession. But you look at the, um, the Burton goal that we conceded against Burton. That was because we were trying to play too far forward. You know, Chambers gets caught forward trying to run onto the ball and the guy heads it past him. Chambers should have held his position and then we wouldn't get beat in that channel. So I think we're a bit too too much going forward in, in, in that respect. So so in that respect, would a switch to a 4-4-2, Matt, would that, that that'd just make it worse, wouldn't it? Because you're committing a, another man further up, up the pitch. I see what Lee's saying there, but the, 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 the tempo and the pace of going forward isn't there to say that we're set up to try and win the game. It's so pedestrian. And even Sky said yesterday, I wish you to a second half team. Watch them come out in the second half. So what are they trying to do in the first half? Just consolidate, which was always McCarthy's way, wasn't it? I always used to think McCarthy weren't trying to win the game. He was trying not to lose it. Um, yeah. I, see, I, do, I do see what you're saying. And but that's it, what it, I feel it, it, Lambert's doing with this, with this feel, whole possession pad stat. We're literally keeping the ball for keeping the ball safe because while we've got it, you can't score with it. If you, yeah. if, if you watched that first half yesterday, look, we had a lot of the ball, but Swindon, every time Swindon came forward, they looked dangerous, didn't they? Yeah. Every yeah. time they went near our, our box, I know they scored the goal, which... Jackson, I don't want to see Jackson chasing their fullback back towards our goal. He needs to, he's going the other way. He's not a yeah. right sided player as long as he's got a hole in his backside. He isn't, I'm mm. sorry. No, but he's a striker. He is a striker. So and we're him, shoehorning him in. We're shoehorning hmm. Dobra. Where is Dobra's best position then, Martin? If it's not on the left, is it a 10? I still okay. think it's obviously a left sided <laughs> player, Luke Thomas who we're linked with, I think he's, he's probably going to come in because we need that natural width out that side. But I can't agree with Lee saying that we we attack, we play on the front foot. Not watching that first half. That first half yesterday was absolutely dreadful. Yeah, Lee, we're, we're trying to play. Yeah, yeah. I think what I'm trying to say is, is that full-backs are pushing on, aren't they? I mean, we don't play direct enough, but we are trying to play on the front foot. But yeah. and if we don't, like in back. transition, we're too slow to get it out from the back. So yeah. going back mm. to my point is that when we then get the ball out from the back, they've got two banks of four that are sitting in that quarter of the in that quarter of the pitch outside the penalty box and inside the inside their centre circle. I mean, Pittman was five yards inside their centre circle, you know, outside their centre circle. If you watch the game, because we were too slow at that point, and it's the transition, isn't it? You know, teams are going to sit back, and once the they Facebook sit back, user there, Lee, Facebook user there. I didn't see one overlap yesterday. There was no overlaps in that first half. Right, Lee, no we appreciate overlap. you. Yeah. I'm going to bring yeah. in lockdown, Steve. Lee, we appreciate you yeah, coming man. in. Thanks ever so much, Steve. Um, overlapping hey, yeah. Chambers. Hi, I think we've 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 spoken about Andre and the, and the youngsters, but Luke Chambers again yesterday, Steve, made a winger look like Lionel Messi. Not for the first time in his career. Is it right to look at Chambers' performance yesterday, do you think? It was shocking. In that first goal, he was defending the guy who scored. He's a left-back. Oh, sorry, a right-back. Why is he in the central defence? So he left up space wide open. The only person left was Jackson, who was like 40 yards away. He was never going to catch him. So what the hell was he doing in the centre of the central defence? There was already two people that left. It was Chambers no, no. Award in those Leave central no. positions, yeah. 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 I got that. Well, to get him all under at centre back and protect, and that cross would never have come in. It would mm. came in because he went, mm. he vanished. And Absolutely. Jackson had to cover for him. For, he had 40 yards to come back to catch him. He was never going to catch him. Even Limford Christie wouldn't have caught him. You know, mm. it was unbelievable. <laughs> and I thought, from that, from that point on, we would not be. We were nothing. And I was so optimistic yeah. yesterday, thinking we'd have a five-day break, we'd be confident, and I just lost hope as soon as that went in. I thought, they're all yeah. over the place. Yeah. Even Lambert, he had his little snood on, he really didn't look like he gave us one. <laughs> and I was sad. <laughs> well. Where do you want to be there? <laughs> well, exactly. You're exactly right, Stephen. It's, it's New Year's Day. Yeah. Mm. At least she bothers to get up and go shopping. You know, he, he didn't. He didn't. He didn't want to be there. No. no. Where, do we, where do we go from here, Steve? Where do we go from here? Is bringing players in this window the answer? Is well, I think this season. I'll tell you now. This season done with. 
we are not good enough. If we can't beat the 23rd side, we are not good enough to be in the top six. Let's write this season off. This season's done with. Yeah? Let's forget about the likes of Chambers, Hughes, the big earners. They've got to go. Th their time is done. Yeah? Let's focus on the young lads. Get the younger lads in there. Give them the rest of this season just to get used to playing men's football. The D and Darbers, you know, the Dobras, the Amazonis. You know, I know it's a risk, but it's no more of a risk than paying people losing every week. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, it's time. Yeah, it's, it's, it's time to move life. on, Curtis. Steve said it's time to move on from the from the more senior players. Do you agree? Oh, yeah. with that? Is the season is your season finished with, Curtis? Done, done. It was it was at seventy minutes yesterday. I switched over to QVC, Martin. I, I, I mate, I, I, I found more excitement looking at deals they had on mattresses than they did watching that game any further. I, I, I looked on Twitter, saw judges score in the eighty seventh minute. Didn't care. I didn't quite. Honestly, I didn't care when Norwood scored. It was it, like I say, it was a fluke goal. Uh, why am I going to cheer? I'm not going to cheer a fluke goal. I don't. I don't. We didn't really. I don't. I don't think we were ever at the races yesterday. We had a bit of a, let's say, a bit of dominance when we got that goal. But the world then just finished us off. It, it was over 25 days ago for me. I, I'm. I, I. I've given up on this and this season already. I think. But I, I go back to the point. Like a, a change of manager, what well, it won't do anything. I, I stand by the fact that it won't do anything because we we had a, a long time ago we had McCarthy. I thought he'd be the savior. I thought oh he's he's going to be the man to, to stick it to Evans, I, to turn around a bit like Holloway did at Blackpool when their owner was and was a, well let's face it a knob. So I I Wait, thought yeah I, it, yeah. <laughs> I, I thought I thought McCarthy was the one then to change it all up. And then, you know, turned toxic at the end, probably left, like you say, a year too late. Then we moved on to Hurst, which we thought, OK, it's a young manager, new ideas, new philosophy. And a lot of people say, we, like, well, we wouldn't have done any better under, well, we wouldn't have done any worse under, under Hurst. We wouldn't have done any better. Like, what, what did anyone see in the first, what was it, 16 games, whatever? That, what, what, I didn't see anything. We, we, we were, we were languishing the bottom. There was, no, there was nothing to him. And, Quite clearly, Scunthorpe didn't think the same either. We've tried Lambert now. That's not worked. There's a common factor in amongst every manager. It doesn't matter whether we had the best manager in the world. We're still going to end up with this because there's one main man at the top who, unfortunately, he, we, we can't get rid of. But that's not that's not our fault. It's because, it's because what everyone talks about, this debt. the debt's his. The debt's his. If you put us in the shop window, mm. someone will. There, there, there will be someone who's always willing, especially with the size of our club. And I hate to bring that up because history, anything doesn't matter. We are a League One club. We are exactly where we are. And when I hear people say like, "Well, we should be beating these teams," what? What you're not about these teams? These teams are the same level as us. We, we, we aren't. We aren't a Premier League side facing a League One side. We are a League One side. Like that. That is. That is it. We are on the same level as Aki Stanley's now, and yet Aki Stanley. Are doing better than us. Like it, it, it's embarrassing. It's, it's embarrassing. It's that's it, Yeah, of course you can. Fight far away. You know, I agree with her. The point, the point, in East Anglia, they're saying the better came along, or the best came along. Yeah, but he doesn't do it publicly. Mm. He doesn't do it publicly. Yeah. Go to the sun. Go to the news of the world. Go anywhere. Go on the BBC. Say, I'm putting my club up the same. An investor will come from somewhere. The investors don't read these daily times. Yeah. Mm -hmm. People in Suffolk don't read these <laughs> daily times. And we have the brand. <laughs> <laughs> Whether you like it or not, even, even, even the commentators on Sky would say, yeah, it's a giant that's fallen. Yeah? So we have got a brand to sell. We've got we've got more of a brand than most of the clubs. And he should be using that. And by him turning around and saying, well, I'll sell if the right offer comes along. No, 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 no offer's going to come along. He didn't say the ground. He said the we've ground, got a brand. Oh, sorry. I thought he said ground. A brand. Box. You know mm. The Ipswich Town brand is still well known worldwide. It yeah. is. You know, that and the, the, top, the top and bottom of it is, you know, 
you're not gonna find, you know, it's all right to say, I'll sell. If you're selling your house, you don't wait for someone to knock on your door and say, can I buy your house? You go to the estate agent where they've advertised it. You advertise, you tell it. Buy, buy that, you know. That, that, that comment, that, that no one's going to buy it for it. That is the defeatist attitude that has literally got us into where we are right now. No one's going to buy Ipswich. Why? Why would ten million a year? Okay, it takes the right owner to then come in and change us around. We lose ten million now because the ownership we are under and where we are. It, it, that defeatist attitude is exactly the reason why see, we are. Curtis, I don't see people queuing up to buy. A League One floundering football club with a debt of a hundred million. I don't However, see him out there. We're in a pandemic as well. We all need to get a little bit of a grasp on reality here, boys. With all due respect, Cruncher, you don't know many multi-millionaires stroke billionaires. There's not many floating about. You, ever, and that's you don't not the way pass in your local works. Tesco's. Yeah. Steady ground now. Cruncher, sorry. that's not the way business works. Yeah. That's an investment. If he'd have put that money into, if he'd have put that money into, say, Asda, and Asda folded, he'd have got none of that back. Look at Wigan. The owners of Wigan got practically nothing back. Yeah. Mm. The simple fact is that was an investment. Yeah. Yes. You can lose investments as well as get. Doesn't mean you get your investment back. Yeah. If someone offered him thirty million, he would probably take it because it's only going to get bigger. It's not going to get smaller. Whereas yeah? I don't so think he would. he'd be thinking, well, well, thirty million, or do I want to accept thirty or forty million? Teams are investing in Wrexham. No, I'm sorry, we're a better we're a better pool than Wrexham. So if teams are playing yeah, Wrexham, they'll buy us. Mm -hmm. or yeah. buy Why Wrexham, look, buy Kevin, us. Kevin Ellis there. You we know, are so not an exactly attractive an investment at any price. Why are we an attractive why are okay. we? Steve, we love you. I'm gonna bring in Stuart because he's got a point on the ownership. We do appreciate thanks, you, Stuart. Steve, Steve thanks ever so much. Stuart, yesterday you left us on a cliffhanger, as it were, because you wanted to know how we got back to our roots under Sheepshanks, family ownership, cobbles, etc. So it's a good time to bring you in, I feel. We're not in an attractive proposition, says Kevin Ellis. Mark Stanard, or Matt Stanard, sorry, I believe it was as well. We've got a massive debt, all owed to one bloke. Is it time Evans left, or is it time Evans got real with owning a football club and actually said, look, I know about as much about, about football as I do, I don't know, name anything he's not involved in, and, and actually I, handed the reins over? I get the fact that everyone wants Evans gone, and I, get, and I understand that Evans is not going to go anytime soon. What Evans needs to do is pull his head out of his fucking ass and let's get things sorted out. You feel right, Stuart? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, how, how long's he been manager now? How long's he been manager? Oh, well, how long's he been owner even? How long's he been owner now? Too long. Yeah, too and, long. And I've, 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 I've lost count. I've, I've lost. I've lost count. It's, exactly. Well, nothing has changed. So it doesn't matter whether he pulls his head out of his arse. It's 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 going to go in back in the stand as Nigel Pearson said. It, it don't it don't matter because the man doesn't care. He's all right with us being. A, a steady mid-table league one. In fact, he's, he, he's probably yeah. Quite he got the job done. He got the, he got the job done of getting us out of the championship. Well done, Evans, for that. He got the job done on that one. I don't think he wanted to get us relegated, Stuart. Let's be fair. No, but as Curtis was about to allude to, there is it better for Marcus Evans to have a League One average side? That's costing him seven million pound a year, as opposed to a championship average side, which is is double that. He didn't buy. He didn't take over Ipswich Mine to be floundering in League One. If we all, but why did that, he? Where 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 was the where was the passion to get us promoted though? I do I, I do feel what? I do feel like probably Ipswich was Evans' B plan because his original plan really I don't know what what widely known this is was to buy the Daily Mirror, yes, Tennessee Mirror Group, which is now called Reach PLC, Correct. and I think he headed up. A consortium that was around about 600 million quid it trying was. to get that deal over the line which never materialized for whatever reason and then a couple of years later he comes back and he's suddenly he's the owner of Ipswich down so i feel probably we were probably the b the b option really i think he wanted that he wanted to be i don't know did he did he have aspirations to be another murdoch or something i don't know and of course buying a newspaper is a far bigger investment as those numbers i just said um detail compared to what he's putting in Ipswich. we all I know what he, he took us over matt and with the idea of Bringing in a big name, Roy Keane, you know, get us yeah. to the Premier League, make yeah. your money. And it didn't go right. 
But so why out didn't there, he invest? Anyone out there who said he doesn't care, I don't agree. I think Show he does proof. Care. Show me proof. Because going to AFC Wimbledon away, when it's a stone's throw from one of your properties, does not show you care. No, true. It shows you're in the area and something you own also is in the what area. We need, what we need, we, we can all shout and we can all scream I'm at each other here. We need the fucking local paper to get some fucking proper questions asked. Yeah. You know? Don't sit yeah. on your hands, Stuart Watson, and yeah. all your yeah. five, here's your five takeaways from Saturday's game. We have it every fucking week with you. You know, get out there and ask some proper questions of the owner, the manager, Lee O'Neill. Get get some I proper questions. Because we're all sick and tired of your fucking shit. You shit every week that you publish. I don't agree with this whole as well. Oh, well, the media team is scared of, of getting banned like the last. What? The media what? team is too weak. They ain't got no balls to ask the hard questions. Well, no, they work for the club. They work this for the is... club. That's like that's like Karen at checkouts on, on Tesco having to go at the customer service desk. That ain't going to happen. They work for, <laughs> for the same company. Like you're not, you can't expect the young lads in the media team to go right, Lambert. That was absolutely shite. What are you going to do about it? He work. They work. We're for celebrating him. the paper. We're celebrating. Beating Arsenal in a fucking... What cup was it then? Carabao? Carling, Carling, Carling Cup, wasn't it? We're celebrating but winning Carling the first leg. You know, there's going to be an interview out next week with Tamas Priskin. Who gives so a talk? We didn't even get to the final. The office is local, so I don't see the paper. I only see the Ipswich references online, right? So a lot of that is EADT, right? So I see a lot of that. And it seems over the last certainly six or seven years... It's EADT has been an extension of Ipswich Town PR team. And that's all it is. They're not there. And I'm, I'm not here to disrespect people like Stu, Andy, Mark or Russell, whoever, right? They got a job to do. I'm not a journalist, right? And ultimately, it's the people. One of them, one of them, Callie, was big enough. Adam Drynan. That went well, didn't it? <laughs> the, thing that gets me, the thing that gets me is I see how local papers are around where I am, right? I ain't seen one headline saying... Lambert out. I ain't seen one headline saying is the time up. In fact, the headlines today talked about how great that goal was for Swindon. What the fuck? You're, you're celebrating on the day after we got battered, like a 3 2 flat at us, that we got battered by Swindon, right, who were bottom of, of League One, and your headline is what a goal they scored. Not like what piss poor performance was that. What the fuck? Again, yet on Sky. Chance to, to give it to everyone equals bullshit, and that's it. I don't know. It's just that's quite, like, you're right. You're right, Kelly. That's quite you know. I like a lot of con European football, and you, you go to the the press on the continent. It's just unbelievable in Spain and in Italy. I mean, if if they if if a let's say AC Milan are putting that performance yesterday, the headline on the back would be "You are a disgrace." Or do you know what I mean? They go they go straight for the juggler in in in, the, in Italy. Why don't they? Because but isn't the, it writing for your audience? This the media this, dictates. This is the it. dictating in this in this space. Yeah, no, yeah. you're spot on because, and I'm going to offend some people, and I'm sorry. It's Sunday afternoon, whatever. But I feel a lot of that EADT is is written for those happy clapper fans, the people that are going to be like, yeah. we'll support no 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 matter what happens. If, we, if we'd had fans in there yesterday, you can guarantee there'd still be some people there clapping at the end of the bloody game, right? Guarantee it, guarantee it. Yeah, we got a couple again. Bollocks. We lost to Swindon. Swindon Town. No disrespect to them, but we're meant to be Ipswich Town Football Club. We're meant to be looking at the Premier League. I said it yesterday. I've said it for a long time. Under Evans and Lambert, the only way out of League One is League Two. Leave <laughs> yeah. me wrong, Right. And I think I'll come back to what Curtis was saying. I think Graham said it, um, very attractable Graham, on the show back in uh, last year, where he said, actually, I think now Evans is quite happy where we're at with the wage cap coming in. He ain't got to invest a lot. So if we are an average League One time, uh, average League One team, sorry, I'm, I'm pissed off. I'm not even speaking properly. Right? Um, <laughs> one team, no market so sport in life. Editor, yeah. Martin, Martin is editor. You won't want me as editor. If you see, if you see my WhatsApp messages, you won't want me as editor. No. Nowhere near anything. Really. <laughs> yeah. um, we can talk to. We can talk about like, the game and everything and what goes wrong and everything. And okay, we're playing players. I do get that. Yes, there's um, you know, Chambers. You know, again, as we said it before, against pace, he gets twisted, and that's what happened. We can talk about, and actually, the best player for on the pitch yesterday was Alan Judge. I think, right? Yeah. Um, by far. 
Mm -hmm. Him and Moore would actually work okay together. Yeah. Downs, you know, you were just wondering, is he going to get another yellow? He's got a lot of passion and everything. I think he was rushed back. I think ideally they'd have brought him on a bit later on, maybe, or something. But, you know, a lot of football out from there. But changing the manager, all that's going to do, it might be a little bouncing form, but the club is rotten from inside. Yeah. And the problem is we talk about a big clear out in the summer. Okay, big clear out. People like Hughes and the big owners, they're out of contract, fine. Problem is the players we want to keep will go as well. And the football community, it's a, it's a very close-knit community. We see on socials and stuff, you know, players are friends of other players from other clubs and stuff. Mm -hmm. Other players are trying to go to Ipswich or whatever. Their pal might say, oh, actually, hold on, mate. You don't want to go there. You know, these facilities are actually like this and the owner's like this and the manager wants to do this or that or the other. So, you know, you, we, we've got to think really carefully here. And the only thing we can do is put pressure on the owner for change. Yeah. And unfortunately, with COVID and all the rest of it, we didn't get to do the protest, right? And I don't know when we're going to... Uh, we can talk about that in a minute. I can see Martin not happy with that. But um, we've got to put pressure on the owner. Now, when we eventually get back into the ground, the only statement we can do, and Martin said this last time about the ballot, is not go to the game. Now, we can get 100 or so or 200 or 1,000 people that watch the pods or whatever and say, yeah, okay, you know, uh, maybe 1,000 people might not go. But then you'll have 8,000 or 9,000 because assuming that will have uh, higher attendances or whatever, that will still go there. And, it, and the only way that they'll get influence comes back to what we were originally saying, which is the local media. So the, the people that arrive at the happy clappers need to start asking the happy clappers to do stuff as well. Well, I'm not going to agree with the term happy clappers just because it's four-room policy. But, um, yeah, you yeah, have to start asking questions of all medias. Let's not just put the blame at EADT's door. There are other Ipswich Town podcasts that like to keep powder dry, that like to cosy, have feet under the table, play footsie. Um, it's not just a podcast who don't do anything... Like regards to the manager, that Martin, they don't get involved. Last last week, going off on the tangent, you know, mind, get involved. Let's do some walking. It doesn't matter what podcast you're on. Have any of them got involved? No, they haven't. And that's individual responsibility and individual. I mean, they are quick to jump down my throat if I put something that's wrong. Um, fact, but yeah, I mean, I, I'm not going to say any more on that because my wife said I'm not allowed to. As the podcast itself, so we've got this podcast, we've got a few other podcasts or whatever. We there, There's audiences for each podcast. There's audiences that watch many of the same podcasts. But like I said, it's the majority, there is a lot of fans that are still engaged, not on this digital world with it, Twitch, and it's still print, and it's still those kind of things, right? And it's those kind of fans that we need to get to. And the people that get to them are your EADTs and the other local media. The only reason I said EADTs is because that's the only one I see online. Well, I'm not local. And I, I believe they're the only ones that are getting the access to the club. You know? I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, Matt, you said anyone can a a a ask for access to it. And, you know, EADTs have got it. No one else has. Yeah, it's up, it's up, to, it's up to the club. It's the club's discretion. There's no rules. We could, we could all ask as general members of the general public to go in. Obviously, they wouldn't let us in. But we are, I mean, we are, and the people might not like it. Talking Town is a media platform now. So why can't we go in? It's up to the club. Big, well, there you go. Because I'd crowd I'd crowdsource the questions and then we would <laughs> yeah. get there. There'd be there'd be yeah. more more direct sort of questioning. Um uh, uh, Evan's owner isn't going to change. Crunch says there's no interest to buy the club. It's going to take a, 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 a visionary, isn't it, to buy this football club? Because you don't own your stadium. You own Playford Road, but well, what mm. can you really do with well, Playford well, how Road? How about fan-owned mine? Out consortium. There must be wealthy businessmen in Ipswich. You know, look at Portsmouth. They were owned by the fans when they sort of went down. Mm. I know they're not now, but they they were. Right. You know, it, maybe it yeah. takes something like that. I don't know. AFC Wimbledon are, aren't they? Um, yeah, you know, yeah. And, and they've come from nowhere. And Callie, you said something that everyone keeps saying: no disrespect to Swindon. Well, I, I do want to mean disrespect. They were in League Two last season. Yeah, like, no, with, no, they've no, not no. won a game in six games, Callie. If you can't say we should be a football club when they've not won in six last year, they're a league below. When can you? This was it. This was the moment. I think every town fan and his dog thought we were going to go and steamroll a nobody. <laughs> Yeah, I think if you didn't think yesterday we were going to win at least by two goals, I'd I, thought well. I thought we'd sneak in. I'll tell you why, right? 
So we've been riding a bit of luck since the MK Don game, right? When we got down to 10 men, we were lucky. We, in fact, we defended well as a unit that day. Right after that, three games, the Gin England game, all those games, we scraped results against lower clubs. The wheels were going to fall off at some point, right? Mm -hmm. Secondly, this is Ipswich this season and last season under Lambert. If you've got an issue, if you're going through a bit of shit form like Oxford, like Swindon, play Ipswich Town. All your worries yeah. will be over. Right? That's what happens. We, we are the best opposition to a plugging team. And that's been proven by fact. Mm. And that, and then managers have second formations and we talk about it all the time. 3 5 2 work last year. Or, you know, maybe they've had a 4 4 2, but the two up top work, it's not happening. He's not even he's not even experimenting with any other formation now. He's just that stubborn with we're gonna play this no matter what. You said yeah. it earlier in the show, we're keeping the ball for the sake of keeping it. I think we mm. are playing with fear, they, that we're fearful because mm. didn't Lambert say before that he prefers to be hunting the pack rather than being hunted at the top. Yeah, that's bollocks. <laughs> yeah. 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 He said that. That's his comments, mate. So, oh no 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 no! I just I think those are, are words of a man who's trying to sweeten the pill because he yeah. he, he, he failed. Let's so, be yeah. honest, he failed. Um, he did right. foul last year. We, we can't uh, disrespect Swindon because you know what they absolutely scored one of the best goals at Portman Road. Everyone talked about the other one was Leighton Baines. How long till we talk about the best goal at Portman Road being a fucking Ipswich goal? Excuse my friend. Two, uh -huh. Well, this is it. This is it. Um. And I've, I've seen some people, you know, in the comments say about, you know, investment, et cetera, et cetera. If he doesn't want to sell the club outright, why is he not tapping up a couple of these multimillionaire mates and saying, how much of a stake do you want for X, Y? Like, why are we not seeing... Cause if, if this was fan-owned, and we, let's say us four own this football club and we're just covering the, the costs and we wanted additional investment for players, would we not you, say to each other, well, you know, let's, let's see if we can get an investor in and let's try and give... You know, thirty or forty percent of the club away for they've done that at Sunderland. They've done that at Sunderland, but now it looks like. Remember, we mentioned this a couple of months back. Sunderland had new owners coming in. One of them was twenty-one. I think he's now going to own the club outright. <laughs> Twenty-one-year-old kid from Monaco, <laughs> with ambition, with 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 expectation, with you know. I, I think Mick McCarthy was brilliant for Marcus Evans because since Mick McCarthy, everything has been downplayed. It's poor yeah, Ipswich. It's little yeah, yeah, old I agree Ipswich. With that. We're facing Doncaster next week. We haven't got the horses for the race. We're going to try and match them. We're going to try and do this. We're going to try and do that. We'll try our best. Mm -hmm. You know, when did we stop looking at ourselves as the stately home of of, of English football? As <laughs> yeah, that did it yesterday. It did because it's true. But equally, yeah, I thought like they were condescending a little bit. I quite, but I quite liked it. We... It, it, it. It gave it gave casual fans the fact that Ipswich, you know, have have mm. got history. Why? When did we as fans stop expecting people to, to just to do their jobs? You know, Marcus yeah. Evans, you own the club. Do your job. Do what's best for the club. Manager, when you, when do you your best. A five-year contract last year. That's when we was like, okay, you don't really care. Are yeah, you giving them a five-year contract in the middle of everything that went on? And then but even it, now, you, sorry, carry on. No, no, you, no, you're right. But it does filter down. You know, James Norwood, do your job. Flynn Downs, do your job. Caden Jackson, do your job. Like. Yesterday, did those 11 players on that field do their job? No. The thing is, with footballers, right, they're playing in positions. So they know their position. They've been trained or whatever, right? And then you move around. There's certain movement and all that. If you listen to Wolf's interview yesterday, right, and he'll probably be dropped from the squad for his comments yesterday now, right? But if you listen to his interview yesterday, he talked about, you've got to go close your man down, forget what they're saying on the sideline. So already there seems to be some sort of like, <laughs> yeah, you did say that, you're right, yeah. why are you telling us to play these weird kind of things? Like we, we know how to play. And there seems to be some sort of disagreement from that already. So for me, it's like he's trying to do too much. Like he doesn't know where players' best positions are. Mm. You know, we've got Juju plays all over the place. We got, you talking about Dobra earlier. I think his best role is a number 10, right? But again, like Dobra yesterday, those kind of people, they're, they're, they're kind of chasing the game. We're chasing the game from the beginning, and it's too familiar story. Too often we're conceding early goals, and then from then we're chasing, we're chasing. We're all football fans. You know what happens. The higher you push, more all of a sudden you get hit on the break. And that's all that's going to happen. And I think we, we'll survive. This is Forget the promotion season. This is the relegation um, 
survival season because I think we will survive and we won't go down this year. That's my optimism for Sunday afternoon. I, feel, I still feel, I mean, listening to you guys, they're all really great points. I still think if we do have a change of manager, someone can get better out of this place. Hasselbank proved it at Burton, who yeah. looked a dying thing when we saw him. And we've still got 27 games to go, by the way. I think that's correct. And we're only six points off second by some miracle. And we're playing <laughs> so terribly. It just shows you how poor the league is. So I do feel like if we did get someone else in, we've been saying this for months. So I feel, still feel like we've been delaying the inevitable level not going earlier before Christmas. So if we do get someone else in, I do think we do have a foundation where we could turn around with better tactics. We saw it last year with the 4-4-2. Norwood scored goals, Jackson scored goals. It is there. I just feel with a better mind, a better manager, someone fresher, a Cowleys, for example, I think they can turn us around really quickly. It's still 27 games to go. I think you'll have to Is four two come back even if uh, Lambert goes? Because... If you listen to Marcus Evans' interviews and his five-point plan, he talks about playing a certain way of football and attractive football and those kind of things. Now, Lambert ain't a fool. As much as we dislike him, he ain't a fool enough to know that he played two up top last year. It was working. He's going through a rough patch now. Why not just have it in your back pocket? He's been a professional for so long. You'd think he might try that. Is there something there? We don't know. We don't know the facts or what's going on or whatever. But if you read between the lines, it seems that the only wants to play this certain way of football. This is what we want to do. But there's no plan B. Uh, I, I saw a comment earlier there, and it said just that Evans is short-sighted, and that's where I think the problem is. I think. I know you're 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 right, Kate. And I know for a fact, back in my media football media days, that when McCarthy came in, he called Danny Higginbottom into his office. Was Higginbottom on loan to us? I think he was, wasn't he? Yeah. yeah, was he, like, like, yeah. he called him in and said, "Why are the bloody hell is this squad of players bottom of the of the championship?" So he got he got in those kind of like they you know, sort of trusted lieutenancy where you have Ronnie McCarthy. He got someone who's been around the block a bit and wanted to get the feel of why they were bottom of the table. And I can only presume someone a, a better manager would come in and do exactly the same. And it could be that we don't want to play those tactics. We want you know we want square pegs and square holes. Okay, well, right. <laughs> I'm going to bring in the fishermen. So you three chaps, we absolutely appreciate you as always. Callie, oh, brilliant. Good to see you Legend, guys. Curtis, Legend, yeah, Stuart, yeah. appreciate you. Um, but I thought we'd better get happy. Uh, and of course, brilliant. Hold up, I am on my way. I'm in motion. Let's go to the ocean. Yeah, let's go outside. We can hang out on the beach with our freezing. Yeah, isn't that amazing? In Christmas times We'll be chilling and having a good, good time Happiness. Here he is, look. <laughs> he needs some new music. We can't use that in April when the sun shines. <laughs> yeah, nice intro, that. Yeah, just put a bit of a smile on my face. Did you see that yesterday? Anyway, Mike, did you see that yesterday? People were calling for me and you as a management duo. No hope. Well... Oh, hang on a minute, Mike. That's a bit harsh. No disrespects, right? But could me and Richard really do any worse than what's going on? I'll tell you what I would be doing. I'd be pulling in one or two of the senior players and saying, look, what are you boys doing out there? Do you know what I mean? Uh, uh, why are you, what, are, are you leading by example? Chambers, really? He's going to go down yeah. as a word captain of this club. He's hiding. He's hiding, Mike. Where is he? Exactly. We need... Oh, look at him, look. Um, <laughs> um, where, where, where is this leadership on the pitch? There is none. Yeah, honestly, it honestly, it's like it's like giving a poodle a job to sheep to bring in sheep, isn't it? Really, that's oh, what yeah. Chambers did. For you. Really, I got a point for you from a well-known local non-league manager. He says it's the eleven players on the pitch that should be playing. If you're at a position in the right position, Lambert's not going to make players do that pass shoot at goal it's the players so effectively it's the players fault like yesterday um as i said earlier did they do their job did the players like you're saying where the senior players i think that's, that's fair where is chambers where is ward where is like wolfenden at this point if he's going to be a premier league player should you not be stepping up we can all have loved the after, after the game interviews but you are they playing for the manager they're mine are they playing for the manager i can tell you now Right, and this is an allegation. I know, allegedly, I'm going to say it. I don't care. I, on my head, okay, it's nothing to do with show. Just get all the whatever's that out. I can tell you now. I've heard. I've heard. 
Yeah, I've heard many good rumours that a few of the young players and their parents are not happy with Lambert. I could tell you that now, and they're certainly not happy with Stuart Taylor. Stuart Taylor. The reality is, I'm look, anyway, that's out of the way. I'm, I'm going to say it because I got I, I hold no bars when it comes to stuff like this. You know, um, Judge. I mean, best player of the pitch yesterday, wasn't he? Mm, yeah. I mean, I even I I was watching it on my iPhone while serving customers and all that, and I I will say that I thought Judge had a cracking game for me. One of the worst players, Dazelle. I'm sorry, but sideways passing, hardly any a pass forward. Yeah. Why is why do people think he's a holding mid? He's a defensive midfield player. Not in a million years is Dazelle a defensive midfield player. Yeah, I was thinking that yesterday. I mean, even Richie not in a million. Years. You could see that by sorry, you could see that by the by the 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 lack of effort to close down the worldie. Yeah, but let, hang on, let's don't, let's not. You, we can all bin Andre off, right? But I'm if not. You look, I'm not. If you listen, if you look when he gets on the ball, we are static. Them two wide players yesterday. Dobra, yeah. look, I'm a big fan of Dobra. Paul Caddis was booked after 10 minutes. Mm. 10 minutes. Mm. Mm. He's got 80, yeah. over 80 minutes. Dobra didn't get on the ball. He didn't get at the ball. He didn't drive at the fullback. You know, take him on. Another missed time tackle. It's a red card. He's off. But is, is Dob- we're so is static. Dob- we're so static. And Andre, you've only got to look at the ball he played through to Judge. Judge, he was offside and he handballed it. And he handballed but- it. Yeah, I thought that was uh, but that, that he, was one. That was one forward pass that he made through a run from Judge, yeah, and I agree. Yeah, but we need more than that up front, yeah. and I agree. I mean, mm-hmm. we had players back that are supposed to be first team players back yesterday, right? They came on second half, and and did they really up their game? Did they really look any different? The formation is wrong. We've said it for ages. I'm fed up of talking about the formation. Yeah, and then there's some some, some 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 Ipswich fan turned around and said that Jackson's fault for the first goal. I mean, what planet are they on? What Jackson's a forward. He should be up there. He should even be a leap between the mid the defensive midfielder when we're on the defence, right? I've always been taught, Richard. You're a coach as well. I've always told it's when you've got the ball, let's open the pitch up. When you've got the when you haven't got the ball, let's close the pitch down. It's really is that simple it's not mm. hard to do is it come on lads mm. we know that it is simple Use. but yesterday mm. but, but we're not getting enough from anybody and i just wonder if we are we are I, 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 we, there's two camps right there's the matt phillips camp of somebody else will come in and get more out of this team and there's the mm. other camp and I'll, say it's, I'll say it's led by me where I think we are getting every single thing we can out of this squad as it is no chance it's no just chance. good enough it's no chance not, not in a million years it's just not good. I'm not good having good that enough. mind. Not having it's that not at all, good buddy. Enough. Look, so you're they saying don't. they're playing, we're all playing for the manager. Did you see how they, when they went off at the end, laughing and a lot of them smiling? Does that, to you... So- that's professional football today. That is, oh, yeah. that, that, is, that is why Roy King is the best thing on the TV currently, because the passion's in the studio, yeah. not on the pitch. Like, yeah. that is professional. They care more about other things than they do perhaps their football, like their Did, Instagram following or their TikTok following. Right, can, we, uh, can, we get, can we get Gary Slade's comment on the screen then? Good, good uh, to see you on the show here, Gary. Yeah. Hope you're doing all right, mate. I agree with him. Emery Hughes, binned at half-time. Oh, he should never play again. Never, never play again. Yeah, he's, play. Play. he's got the charisma of a flip-flop, Hughes, in the interview, isn't he? I mean, he, you know, he's, he could... he's not going to fire you up in the middle of the park, is he? To be fair, he, he, overweight. Boring, he looks yeah. overweight, Matt, and he looks lethargic. Talking about overweight, what do you think to Brett Pittman yesterday? He looked like he'd had a good Christmas, didn't he? He looked sure, like did a fat he? hamster. You see, and, yet he caused, and yet he caused problems. Well, it was Phil and Lou at the back, let's be honest. Let's be brutally honest. The bloody I think, I think I could have. I think I could have attacked Chambers yesterday and got past him. <laughs> you know, and, and I'm, I'm 17 stone of pure... Where's that leadership, Mike? When that second goal's in, goal, go, goal goes in, look, it's a worldie. Where's Chambers yeah. cajoling? You see, every time he let a goal in, he yeah. walked slumped with his shoulders down, walking back. You know, there's no leadership. There's no, mm-hmm. come on, boys, let's pick it up. Mm-hmm. I don't see anything. And he's just, I think he's downtrodden. Mm-hmm. He's finished. I think he's I finished. I think he's it. part of the problem. Really Daniel Barnard says, Daniel Barnard says, so was Hughes a better player than Dozel yesterday because no one's talking about him? I think we've given up talking about Hughes because he, oh, Hughes I, I, said, I, said, I said yesterday, I never want to see Emmy Hughes in a blue and white shirt at Portman Road no, ever I don't again. Ever. I've seen Adam Flats. If, if, oh, Lambert, Adam picks, if Lambert picks Hughes, really that cool. sums up everything about Lambert and his ability. People talk about Lambert as like, <laughs> oh, he came in and he, all he had was, all he had was um, 
Hearst as players and stuff like that. The difference between Lambert and Hearst, he's been there, done that. Also won the Champions League, right? Has Did he... he do any better than Hearst with them players? He, they were, in fact, he was worse. He was worse than Hurst, no. Man. He was worse. No, he was. He's been a worse manager than Hearst. He's there's, one of our worst no managers ever. He's, he's one of our worst managers ever, yeah. Mike. Yeah. Yeah, of course he is. Anybody, anybody that understands the game of football or really understands the game of football, not just from man management, training ground, through to the preparations leading up to the game. Do you know what I mean? Anybody with half a brain cell, yes, you could see that we needed changes. The formation wasn't working. We lost to Swindon. I mean, they've been struggling. No and, I, and I put I put two nil. If you remember, I said we'd win that two nil. And when we went three one down, I swear to God, if I'd been on this show yesterday, I think I would have swore like you would never have heard me swear before. You know, and and I picked up on a point where Rich made earlier. The journo's right, isn't it? A journo's job to ask the tough questions. What is this East Anglian Daily Times doing? Are they being back pocketed by the club? Because I'm telling you now, that's not journalism. Man, That's man. pathetic. <laughs> I could ask tougher questions. Ask tougher questions than my wife. <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, come on. Where, yeah. where, where, is, yeah. where, where is the Suffolk journalism? Where's the Berryfree Press? Where's the Eastern Daily Times? Where's the Ipswich Echo? Whatever. Where is all these papers that are calling calling Lambert out? Mm. Yes, where are these? Well. Where are all these papers? I'm <laughs> sick and tired. I'm sick and tired of. Reading on, reading on there, they pop up on Facebook. Oh, yeah, it's which lost to a world. No, we didn't lose to a worldie. We lost to a rubbish team because we were shit. Um, George Nunn. I think, the, well, the, club, I think the club, you know, going back to what we said earlier, the club have probably got a slight dictatorship slash stranglehold on them. And, you know, they and Phil has been kind of the sacrificial lamb from those were the days. because well, He's just made Phil, ha Phil Hammer a, a, a martyr, isn't he? In yeah. the journalism world, he's yeah. the only one that's actually had the bollocks to stand up to. What's that? I mean, look what's but happened. He, yeah, but nobody's I don't his fault that. technically. But, but nobody's, no, nobody's given column space to Phil Hamm being banned no. still. No one's, no. Like, we've, we've, no. we've suddenly gone all, you know, radio silent on that and just yeah. hope the world forgets about it. Yeah. Well, we're not going to radio suffering in all this. Well, they are the ones that probably do ask the hardest questions. But yeah. do they? Then, well, I, well, I'm not saying they're hard. I'm just saying they're probably the hardest. Stuart Gerald didn't get a big rap yesterday, Matt. Stuart Gerald didn't get a big rap. He didn't even know the town players. He was going on the, by the colour of their boots. Apparently. I want to know why I weren't asked. You know, after the money last minute. I hope Brenner's feeling all right, by the way. If he's listening, shout out Brenner, it's a top lad. But uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, BBC are, are a broadcast, a, an official broadcaster for you know with the deal with the football league, which is hence the reason why they, they can get in there and ask those questions. But again. You know, Brent, you know, you, you hear what happens when Brenner asks a tough question of Lambert, mm. gets all defensive and turns it back on why well, he's being so negative and all that kind of. That's a good one there yeah, from yeah. Leighton Durrant. Swindon travelled down yesterday as well. Yeah, they did. Yeah, four-hour journey, wasn't it? Apparently. Yeah. Stuart Jail four people paid ten pound for Now TV. Says Gary Slade. Going back, George Nunn challenges you all. Um, I challenge anyone to name a single lasting positive thing that Lambert has done for this football club. I'll kick it off. The community trust. That shouldn't be a positive because that should all be in place, but he did bring it back. Okay, well, some positives. I feel like the signing of Kane Vincent Young was, was good. Oh, but we've not Matt, seen leave him. off that, will you? We've oh. not seen him. We've been able to see him play more than nine games I yet. Think, but I, I think like, seeing tears at the Virgin Mary statue is more likely than this, seeing him play. Uh, small one player at this club. Uh, you know, we keep harping on about Kane Vincent Young like he's going to save our season. <laughs> I mean, come on, lads. Just look. It, we all know. Look, we all have different opinions. We all have to. We all have. You know. But we could all agree. It's not just down to Kane Vincent Youngs. So how can you put the responsibility on that young lad's shoulders? I don't think he's going to say. Oh, mate, oh, 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 mate, mate of mine. Right? Reckons he saw Sears at Colchester yesterday. Yeah, I've seen that rumor. Colchester United are laying off staff like uh, nobody's business. I don't think Robbie Cowling's dipping into his back pocket to be able to buy a striker of Freddie Sears. I don't, I I don't, mean, I don't think... Um, I you don't said think striker and Sears in the same breath there. Can you just elaborate on that, please? I tried to. I did I did do it in a straight face. <laughs> I did my best. I don't, I don't think Kane's going to save our season, but I certainly think he'd get us playing with a bit more tempo because he's going to get up and he down. He played football. He didn't play fo football for 14 months. No football, Matt. <laughs> Let me just caveat that he would play a full season. <laughs> 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 
All he'd offer is, all, all we would be is, but again, a one-dimensional team. We'd, we'd Teams would just turn around and say, look, we know what's going to happen. They're going to give it to Kane Vincent Young. It's going to bomb down the right-hand side. So we'll just stick three, two or three players on him. Do you know what my fear is, actually, about the Freddie Sears thing? My fear is that he does go on loan to Colchester and we pay all the wages. Just so, just all majority of, just so we can bring in this guy from Barnsley on loan. And to me, that's like... That ain't going to happen. Absolutely ridiculous. Well, well, you say that, no, but we live, in a, we live in a world with one in, one out. If Paul Lambert's identified <clears> this <throat> Barnsley winger as his missing piece and he's been told you need one person out and the only person who can leave is Sears to Colchester on a 90% wages, and we'll, we'll pay 90%, by the way, that to me just says... What the uh, we won't. Doing? This player from Barnsley, why do you want... Why, look, why would any... Load of suspects, right? It's a loan um, deal, I love He'll go this where he's club, told. right? I love this club, right? I absolutely love it. I love the history of it. I love the passion from it. And I love the fans from it, okay? Well, I don't always agree with most of some of the fans, and, and that's just part of football. But the reality is, right, if I was a – if I was a my, like I've said this before. If my son Jake was asked to come and play for Ipswich, right, under the current regime, I'd say, look, that's a bad move. I think you'd be better off going to a club that's actually doing well in that league rather than a club that's struggling. The fans, the fans are already on the manager's case. The Have fans are already on, already on the Evans. Mike, how old's your son? Jake's 14. 42. Yeah, you could, he wouldn't have nothing to do with Lambert and them. It's... No, hang on. I'm talking if... Well, OK, my son Michael is 21 years old. Yeah? Say he was banging goals in League Two or say he was a, a, you know, a Premier League player, been doing... Doing well, right? I I wouldn't I would not suggest that I, if he was offered a chance to come to it, I would say no under the current regime. Why would anybody come here? Right now we have nothing to offer other than history. We that's have ridiculous. nothing. We don't have. That's not ridiculous, Martin. How can you say that? The club is rot. Everybody's saying it. The club is rotten from the bottom right through, right through to the management. Okay, that's that's where it is. Yeah. Like, Matt said, though, like Matt said though, Mike, like Matt said earlier in the show, we are only six points off second in the league. We're not just floundering above the relegation zone. And Premier and League if the season finished, not... where would we end up? Yeah, but, but Mike, right now. Premier, Premier League teams do not mind sending their young players to us to develop. We have a record of developing young players for Premier League teams. So if you're Barnsley... You want to be looking at it and thinking, yeah, that's a good development ground for our winger. That's a good place to come. So, and then, as a player, most nine times out of ten, obviously you got that one in Dobra, would say, okay, yeah, I'll go there on loan, no problem. I'll do as, you, as I'm told, boss. So that's why he'd come here because he's a loan deal. If it was permanent, I might be agreeing with you, but on loan, he'll come. Is he the answer? I don't know. Look, um, we've got to got to move it on. I want to finish off with a couple of points from the chat before we jump onto something a little bit more light-hearted. Joel Fern says, lads, we just simply aren't good enough. The squad's poor. Manager's poor. Owner's poor. Those are all true points. Yeah. Does more need to be said about the supporters' trust and their lack of access to the club? Because since we had him on the show and it was a few things were, on a, or I, albeit on a very bad internet line, were revealed, should more be made of that? Should more, should more be made of that, that the club yeah. does not yeah. talk to the supporters' trust? Yeah, well, you'd like to have thought the local press would have made more of that. But maybe it's the fact it was on this show is the reason why they didn't. I don't know. But yeah, that was certainly a newsworthy thing, I, I believe. Yeah, if I was the editor of the East Anger Daily Times Sport Press, I, I would have made a thing of that, 100%. OK. And as fans, do you think we should continue to to speak up for Phil and the supporters' trust? Yeah, and, you know, 100%. The, yeah, yeah. yeah. So how do yeah. We what, what, the good thing about being, you know... <laughs> You know, even though I am very much anti-lockdown, the good thing about the lockdown is when fans do go back to the grounds again, it's going to be on that 1,000, 2,000 like they did previously. So we will actually have another bite of the cherry to do that protest where you don't, you know, don't go in for the ballot. You can have another bite of the cherry to do that. I don't think it'll happen. I really don't. I think there's, there's, there's stuff going. I, I'm all for protesting, 100%. But the current climate and the current situation... You just situation need nine blokes, just... mate. That's all you 100%. said. You give me... You just... all... No, I said... No, I said 20 blokes. <laughs> give me 20... Sorry. 20 guys, a block of car park, and let the players... And then and and that, all, that, all, that, all that do is just highlight highlight the issue. All you got to do is block the players' car park. Where are they going to park? Local Sainsbury's has gone, haven't we? Yeah, I do feel like if Blue Action are this... You know, and I, spoke, I like a lot of what they do, and I like their banners and all that kind of thing. I've got the shirt mm. and all that kind of thing. I like what they do. But if they are that kind of, you know, and that's sort of stepping into like Italian ultra territory with the banners and all that kind of thing, and 
working in you know they'll do stuff during the night so it's there in the morning mm -hmm. you know if you're if, if if you're building that reputation for you then stop the lockdown go and do it anyway did you do i think anyway. i think things, I think things are gonna happen anyway go and do it anyway if you're you know if you're that hardcore go and do it anyway as i say i'm sure another banner will sort all this mess out um i'm yeah i'm going on twitter by the way rich yes oh, get oh. in <laughs> come on mike <laughs> right, mate. We love you. We appreciate you. Look after yeah, yourself. Cheers, mate. All the best, guys. Well done. Yeah. Good. Yeah, good. Great show again. Great show. Love you, fisherman. Uh, right. Um, we did have some brilliant managers in the past. Let's be honest. So let's 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 remember a great one. Hello, Talking Towners. I have some great news for you. We are launching our third networking group, and yes, we are naming it after the main man himself. Sir Alf Ramsey. So if you think that your business could do with being at the top of the leaderboard this year, we would love to hear from you. Now check out networking90.co.uk or perhaps you'd like to contact us through our events website, iwanttonetwork.com. Crunching Tackle in association with Networking 90. Crunching Tackle, what you got for us, Crunch? Well, I don't know if people have seen it. Uh, so in the week, Royal Antwerp, Ford, Didier Lacmel Z. He's a Cameroon, 24-year-old uh, international. Um, I don't know if you've got the um, – you you've not got it. Oh, right. So probably you've seen it. It's been on um, the BBC website, a lot of um, other outlets. He's um, – Panathon Icos are interested in signing him. You yeah. see it, didn't you, Matt? He's turned up at the training ground wearing an Andalek shirt. <laughs> and there's pictures of him trying to get into the ground and there's some security guys holding the door. But then he's um he was actually going to uh, wear a shirt of their great city rivals. Is it Beer Shot? Heard of them, Matt? Playing the Belgium League? Mm, and my Belgian football knowledge isn't as good as it once was. And he had a change of heart. <laughs> He had a change of heart and the encore never happened. And then he's issued an apology saying, I want to apologise to the club and to the Antwerp supporters because they are magnificent and wonderful. <laughs> if I reacted like this, it is because my head was somewhere else. And then it takes me to back to the summer of um, 1996, Ipswich Town. George Burley, he was a good manager, wasn't he, Martin? Uh, he had his moments. <laughs> and Ipswich Town... Um, we signed Ian Crook. I think you remember, Matt. Yeah, there, yeah. 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 Um, I was reading. I've was, done a bit of digging on the internet. He there was only two teams in for him because he wanted to stay in, um, mm. stay in the local area because of family. So Peterborough, they were in. Um, I think Division. It'd be League Two. They were in League Two then, and obviously Ipswich. So Ian Crook thinks, yeah, sign for Ipswich. He had the picture with the scarf, the yeah. shirt. Yeah, the, the uh, interview. Yeah. A few days later, um, Mike Walker comes back to Norwich, gets on the phone. Do you really want to leave? And he says, no, he didn't really want to leave. So he backtracks and he goes back to Norwich. Yeah, I think the, pre you... I think the Premier League had to come in and sort of uh, rubber stamp on the site, the, the, the paperwork that had already gone through and stuff. <laughs> yeah. So, and of course, yeah, you've got group. Peter Odenwengi yeah. sat outside QPR, I think it was QPR's gates in his car, waiting for the transfer from West Brom. <laughs> never happened. Uh, no, never happened. Yeah. I think he's still sat there, I think. Um, then, you've, of course, you've got Neymar, who refused to show up at Barcelona in 2017 to force through a move to PSG. Didn't your namesake, the governor, aka Paul Lintz, have a Man United photo shoot before he'd actually left West Ham? He could now. well have done. He could well yeah, have done. So it's not the first look. time players have yeah. tried to force through, it. but this is the first time I've seen... I mean, this is the day we live in, isn't it? You know, the day and age we live in where you can do this and it be on social media, mm. you know, before before anything else. I love it. Yeah. I think, you know, Lee Anderson says, crook by name, crook by nature. I'd love to interview. <laughs> Look, you know, uh, I'd just love to get behind that transfer. and just really. Dig have you heard him talk world. now, Matt? Oh, it was funny because I, I was doing a little bit of digging and there, he lives in Australia now, Ian Crook. Oh, he's got an Australian twang to his accent. It's just <laughs> bizarre listening to him. Good day, Canaries. <laughs> yeah. And you've got a, a really something else for us as well, Crunch. Really light-hearted, you know. Obviously, talk us through what else you've got. Well, it was heartwarming yesterday. Uh, Chorley uh, playing the National League North. 
And I know they were playing Derby. Derby had COVID, so none of the first team played. Derby, we can get into it. Yeah, we can we can get into the FA Cup shouldn't be taking place. It's like it's like Aston Villa. They played their kids the other night against Liverpool. That's and disgusting. Looks, and then that it looks disgusting. like in the week their game against Tottenham is going to be cancelled. So you can't be having it both ways. But surely, if, if, oh, yeah. hang on. But are you telling me if it was reversed and Liverpool were down to their bare bones, that game would have gone ahead? Well, yeah. But then again, Liverpool did play the kids last season in the Carabao Cup semi-final against Villa, if you remember, when they were in the World Club Championship. So, but getting back to Chorley, so I've got I've got a little bit of a side issue as well. So Ben K, Matt, is the Chorley groundsman. And he slept under the covers. He slept under the covers. They they had um 10 days ago the pitch was frozen. They've had yeah. snow. They've had yeah. the covers on. He slept underneath the covers for an hour at, from 4 a.m. to make sure they got the heaters on, yeah. to make sure the game exactly. was on. But, look, they had a great 2-0 victory. And then at the end of the game, what did they do? Do you want it? I've got it. Yeah. It's here. It's here. Play this. This is great. Here's a tune. <laughs> Over five million views, this man. Yeah, fantastic. Brilliant. It's going now. Here you go. Get ready. Was the last time you were that happy <laughs> watching it? Fantastic! <laughs> Not Tuesday night, they're back in action against Lemmington. <laughs> there you go. It, it kind of brings a tear to you, right? Did it not? Brilliant. Yeah. Like, do you know, like yeah. watching that, I, I realize how much I miss human contact. Yeah, like, yeah. When the last time I got drunk with friends was, when the last time I sang a song like that in a stadium was, yeah, just like. That's normal life, and that's almost like you're on the outside looking into normal life. And it proves that the, the, the FA Cup people do, do. I know, look, it's been disrespected so much, but people mm. do still care about it. Yeah, Facebook users, Facebook users not happy. I'm sorry, that is ridiculous. So many in that room who are not part of the original group social distancing. I would imagine that they, because they were playing a team that, as uh, you know, in the EFL, they would have been all COVID tested. Prior to the match, but that's like explaining magic. Like, just let mm. it happen. Don't try and explain the trick. We all know yeah. it's done by something, right? <laughs> Look, let them have their moment. Forget social yeah. distancing just for five seconds because you're not yeah. part of it. And yeah. you know, it's still like Tesco's and not bothering, right? Um, what else have we got? We've got the mogul story, and we've got I've got a goat as well. So which one? Have do you, you really go on in? Well, let's Everyone, let's, you want? Let's do the mogul because uh, that's FA Cup related. Is it? Yeah. Cool, FA Cup. What you got? Now, as I've said before on the show many times, I used to help run the FA Cup and it was fantastic and I feel very privileged to have done so. So I've always looked at third round weekend as something that was something to look forward to. And, you know, this afternoon, five o'clock, BBC One, Marine from Merseyside playing Tottenham Hotspurs. Absolutely brilliant. If only there was a crowd was allowed to go in for that game. That would sum everything up about the FA Cup, just like what we saw with, with Chorley. So founded in 1894, Marine player Rossett Park, and it backs onto Rossett Road, which is behind the dugouts with the back gardens. And they have to have nets up 
to say they don't lose any footballs. And if they do, then there's a, the house number is on the net. So the ball boys and the ball girls know to go to duck out the stadium, go around the corner and knock on the door to get their, their football back. And it just, you know, that kind of world is so different to what Spurs, you know, their new ground, what Mourinho's used to, the Bernabeu, the new camp, Old Trafford, Champions Leagues. Mm -hmm. And it's just what's fantastic about the FA Cup is that that meeting of that meeting of worlds. And you talk about the community, you know, we've built a good community on here, albeit digitally. But, you know, people were saying in the media this week that what Marine have is a real community because only the you know, only the local people support Marine. And there was a guy who couldn't afford his Liverpool season ticket anymore, a guy called Adam Brotherston, I think it was. So he went to see Marine. And when he arrived, the the uh, the chairman, Paul Leary, was on the turnstile. He said, oh, I don't recognise you. not been here before. Welcomed him in. Took him to the bar. Beautiful community spirit. Everything that Ipswich is at the moment. We talk about selfish spirit, don't we? Everything at this level is, is all about family and roots and community and all that kind of thing. So I think it's absolutely fantastic. I was involved in a game in the FA Cup, which was a team called Shortwood, which is down in the Chil it's sort of Chilton area, Gloucestershire way. Um, they played Port Vale. It's their record ever attendance, which was 1,200. And we could only get 100 Port Vale fans in. And they nearly had to move the game to Forest Green, which is down the road, Forest Green Rovers, again, another small club, but even but bigger than um, uh, Shortwood, because um, they couldn't get the BT trucks down there down to get the cameras in eventually they managed to find a way of doing it but you know Crazy. so i'm eating the world it's fantastic so tune in this afternoon it's gonna be good marine spurs yeah it puts just a shame doesn't it because we always ditch the cups to focus on the leagues and then we end mm. up fucking up the leagues and then we end up you know so there's, there's never a good fact <coughs> never never ever a good feel factor about town because you're never no. good enough in the league and you no. always been off the uh, and i think bidding off the cups actually puts in that defeatist losing attitude like yeah you should you, every game you you are in. You should try to win, whether it's the Papa John's, yeah. the FA Cup, the League Cup, and I think it always filters down, doesn't it? Crawley are beating Leeds three nil. Um, second Mark, 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 Mark Wright, Mark Wright, the brothers just coming on. Josh Wright, they've signed Josh Wright. He's just coming on now. <laughs> Mark Wright's on the bench, isn't he? Yeah, he's on the bench. Yeah. Right. yeah. Last one before we bring in our stuff at Mind Weekly Total. What are we doing? Yeah. Yeah, I've got me go. Very quick one. We've been, you know, it's just it's quite an act to this because we're talking about Ipswich and faded glories and all that kind of thing. I'll tell you what's faded glory for me. Now I've put all the Christmas decorations away. We decided to finish off the box of Quality Street the other night. It's not as good as it, where it used to be, Quality Street. I don't know where you boys stand. Are you are you on the celebrations? Are you on the roses? It's always been Quality Street in our house. I mean, Brett Pittman had, had a few, Matt. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, no. Leave yeah, him alone. Yeah. It's been going since 1936, Quality Street. It was Saddam Hussein's <laughs> favourite confectionery. He's having it shipped over, apparently. But for me, it's lost its magic. There's only two now I'd keep. The toffee finger and the toffee penny. What are your go-tos there? What are your go-tos on the quality street? Orange cream. Awful. Not for me. Strawberry delight. Terrible. Oh, um, there's a lot of chocolate crunch as well. Maybe, maybe, you, maybe we could get a quality street endorse one for you there, Rich. <laughs> <laughs> The fudge, I like the fudge. Coconut eclair, I'm on it. The toffee penny, as I said, everything else can get in the bin. Not the toffee penny, I would have said, but I've only got six teeth left. And I, I can't be people. losing I any more. people for a toffee penny. Do you want yeah. after eights, Matt? No. The missus loves those. She's got gin and tonic ones at the moment. They, kind of get, they taste mm. kind of like the normal ones, but. Uh, no. After yeah. eights, matchmakers. Yeah, you've got Not a mint. The chocolate mint flavour is yours, is it, Crunch? You know what I always <laughs> used to get when I was a kid for Christmas? Go on. Terry's chocolate orange. Yeah, 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 yeah. That was always a go-to in our house. It was. But right. uh, I, I will still keep getting quality streaks. I want them toffee pennies. To, to, to eat all that chocolate, you need some activity. So this week, obviously, we, we've got four shows before February, 25 miles a week. Um, we smashed it. 150 miles this show did this week. Um, absolutely incredible. So thank you to every single person who has, who has taken part and is taking part. It's 100 miles for January. But we've smashed it, so let's keep going. Let's now see if we can get 200 miles in the books and then keep going from there. Um, we've got 140% of our target, of our weekly donation targets. So that's absolutely brilliant. But again, the donation page is coming in the chat. If you want to donate to us, um, it's not to us, it's to Suffolk Mind. We are we're obviously doing the campaign for them, then please do. Even if you're not walking and you, and you just feel like, you know what, it's a really good cause. Here's a fiver, here's a tenner, here's 50p. Whatever you can spare, then obviously the link's in the, in the chat there. Just drop it in. Alternatively, if you are doing it with us and you're doing your miles, donate it at 
whenever you're ready to. Stephen Lancaster, obviously Jack's dad's done 14 miles this week. So big up, Stephen, for that. So on the lengths, so he's done 14 miles. Well done. He's um, spoken to his boys, Jack and Rory, who both run Millennium Clothing. And before their new range for the spring, they will be doing an end-of-line sale and a percentage of the profits will be going to Suffolk Mine. So well done to Jack and well done to Rory. Top work. Big up. Well done. Brilliant. Brilliant. Uh, I want to give a big shout-out to Chris Peach, who this week has been absolutely smashing it and putting me to shame. 26 miles he's done this week. That is Brilliant. absolutely Brilliant. amazing. Uh, the Ingham family have done 20. Graham Brooks done 23 miles according to my yeah. conversion calculator because he's doing it in KMs. Uh, Philip's family, how many have you done this week? We've done 25. The little collective, the three of us, Amazing. done 25. Amazing. Uh, the Lamberts, when I say the Lamberts, the wife uh, and the dog have done 15 miles this week. So big Very up, good. Mrs. How far Mrs. was it to the chip shop to walk? Oh, I don't know if she put that in. <laughs> 50, I don't know. I'll have to work it out. About 15 and a half then. Um, and the Moss family, now they're loud out. Now they're let no, loose. This is on my own. This is me. This is just me. Yeah, Rich is on his own. Yeah. Fine. Ditch man. the missus. You know, it's just me. Just me, this is. What have you done, Rich? 26.7 miles. Wow, brilliant. Marathon. Leading the way. Yeah, Leading fantastic. the way. Now, don't forget, guys, you can do this by walking, cycling, rowing, running, any activity standing on the spot and just doing a, a step count is activity so however you want to do this you can do it any way you can um obviously i'm, I'm a disabled guy so i'm going to do it on my mobility scooter that's absolutely fine it's all going in the same pot but it's all for suffolk mine so you know if you can dig in um, and let's try and raise it for a good cause that's uh, going to be needed let's be honest because yeah. lockdown etc county says trips to the fridge count too they do <laughs> oh in that case we might have a bit more than 15 that could be going to the jungle and going to the fridge an awful lot. And the Bears play tonight, and that's an awful lot of alcohol that needs to be consumed to watch them play. So, uh, again, we might be going to the fridge and back again. So, let's end the show. We've called on the press to do more. We've called on the owner to do more, the manager to do more, the players to do more. How do we end this today's show? Who, who else needs to do more? I don't think the fans do a lot more because we're, we're no. sticking with it, aren't we? We... we yeah. Yeah. You just need something to hold on to. Surely, mm. you'd, you think when we haven't played for 25 days, that they would have been raring to go yesterday, guys. And I just thought that was yeah. poor. Very poor. I'm going to make an audible. I'm going to finish on probably Neil's anthem because at the end of Neil's anthem, I think he sort of nails the predicament really well. We oh, can I do it? Yeah. Go on. Go on. A quick one. So, Megan Day uh, on the Just Giving. Oh, account yes. we they are at seven thousand six hundred pounds so keep donating wow fantastic brilliant well, well done, done. Everybody. yeah top work we go to the yeah well, we go to the money turn me right on you look like you got just with no lights on no lights on a superman that spin like a cyclone fit check spin like a Wake up to the money, turn me right on. Yeah, but we're crap. We're not going to dominate any team.